Alchemy and today we are making something really, really cool. We are making a rainbow in a jar. Did you know you could do that? How cool is that? So before we get started, here is what you will need to make your very own rainbow in a jar. All right, so what you will need first, of course, you need a jar. This is the size I'm using. You can do bigger or smaller, depending on what you have at home. I'll just make sure that it's clear so you can you know, see the rainbow. You need some food coloring. So I've got a bunch of different, oops, got a bunch of different colors here. So I've got green, blue, red, yellow. Um, any of those colors will be just fine for what we need. And then we'll need a half a cup of each of these ingredients. So we'll need light corn syrup, We'll need blue dish soap. If you don't have blue dish soap, um, you can just use clear dish soap and color it blue and that will work just fine. We need water. We'll need um, oil of some kind. I'm using vegetable oil, um, but you can use canola or olive oil, just anything that is already yellow. And then finally, some isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. Need. So let's get started here. So get this out of the way, grab my jar, and let's get started. So first of all, we are going to start with corn syrup. And I'll explain why we are going to start with corn syrup in a little bit. But first, we are going to color it. What's this bottom color if you can And the color it purple. So what two colors do you think you need to mix together to make purple? You got it, red and blue. So you're going to add a drop of each. If I can get my cap off. Alrighty, add one drop of blue. And we're gonna add one drop of red. something to stir it with. All right. And we're going to stir this together. You can see I think it's a really cool, really cool purpley color there. Mix that together. It's going to take a little bit for it to get all mixed together because corn syrup is really, really thick, which that gives you a clue as to why we're starting with this first. Alrighty, now we got that all mixed and we are going to add it to our jar. Just like that. Look at that color. And make sure we get all of that great stuff. And it might be a good idea to put like a paper towel or something down below your jar just so that you can catch any any spills or anything like that. Alrighty, we got that. Now, next color we're going to add, and it's hard to see, but next color we're going to add is blue. Now, we are going to add our dish soap mix because that's already colored blue for us. So here is the secret to a good um, rainbow in a jar. You need to make sure to pour really, really slowly. So that way um, the, the liquids don't mix up too much. They shouldn't, but you want to make sure that they're not going to get mixed up if you pour too fast. So pour really, really slowly. Just like that. And you may need to have a grown-up help you pour very slowly or to help kind of mix all of this stuff up together. Okay. Got our dish soap in there. Good. All right. And look at that. You can see the purple. You can see the blue floating on top of that. Pretty cool. All righty. Next up, we are going to add our water. Now, what color do you think we need to add next to our rainbow? You kind of have to think of the rainbow backwards a little bit. So if we've done purple and we've done blue, what do you think the next color is? 
So we're going to take our green and then we are going to add two drops of the green. syrup stirrer is still a little sticky so you may need to wipe that off or you can just do what I'm going to do here and just use the bottom end. Stir that up so it's nice and green. Perfect. Let's get rid of that for now. Alrighty, now remember we're going to pour really really slowly again. here that way it'll slow down how fast you're pouring it. Alrighty, we got our green. Alrighty, so you can see the green sitting on top and if you notice I kind of smushed the blue down a little bit. Maybe that was from me pouring too fast but we got our green going. Next, what color do you think is next? So we've got our yellow vegetable oil. I'm going to again pour very, very slowly. Super, super slow so that we don't mix any of the colors. Alright. We've got our oil there. How cool is that? See that yellow floating on top and last but not least what's our last color that we need to do red you got it so we've got our alcohol here and we're going to add two drops of red color we've got one and two very good all right let me grab my steam stirring device again and stir it up Once again, we're going to pour very, very, very slowly. Oops, that's why you put something underneath your jar. <laughs> very slowly so it sits right on top. Alrighty, and ta-da! We've got a rainbow in a jar. Now, we able to do this? How are liquids able to stack on top of each other? Well, it all has to do with something called density. So density means just how much stuff is packed into an object. So that's kind of talking about all the atoms and molecules and all that stuff that make up an object. So some things have a high density. So that means there's a lot of stuff really packed in tight uh, into that object. And there's things that are low density, which means that those things are really spread apart. So something that's high density tends to be much heavier than something that is low density. So which of the things in this jar do you think has a high density? Yeah, that's right, that corn syrup that we started with. Um, and you can kind of tell too when you're stirring up the purple that it was really thick and really, really tough to stir a little bit. Um, that's because it's a high density thing. And so that's why we put that on the bottom and we layered everything up into what is the lowest density or the lightest thing that we have, which is that alcohol. And so you can look online to find um, different density levels for liquids and you can play around with this at home with different, um, different types of oil even or water, whatever you want to do to see if you can make um, different rainbows in a jar at home. So. That is all I have for you guys today. Have fun making these. Um, make sure to have a grown up take a picture and put it in the comments below. Um, make sure to tag Siouxland Library so we can see what it all looks like um, and use the hashtag SF Time Capsule um, so that way we can add it to our awesome citywide time capsule. All right, thanks everyone.